and welcome back to my channel. This is episode number six, I think, in the Tectonic Processes and Hazards series. We're going to be discussing why do some hazards become natural disasters. We are now also moving into inquiry question two. Finally, this question is, why do some tectonic hazards develop into disasters? If you would like access to the notes that I'm using today, I will leave a link down in the description bar for you. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. Why do some natural hazards become disasters? Disasters don't just happen. They result as a failure of development, which increases vulnerability to hazard events. What is vulnerability? Vulnerability is the ability to anticipate, cope with, resist and recover from a natural hazard. Resilience is the natural ability to protect lives, livelihoods and infrastructure from destruction and to restore areas after a natural hazard has occurred. A natural hazard such as an earthquake, volcanic eruption or tsunami, when they affect people, it only becomes a hazard once people are affected. Human factors, vulnerability and resilience. Every day, individuals and governments make decisions that affect how well they are prepared for and can cope with a hazard event. For example, governments decide how much money to invest in infrastructure to protect against hazards, such as flood defences or hurricane shelters. And a decision like that can have a huge influence on the impact and scale of a hazard event. A country's level of development also affects its vulnerability and resilience. Haiti remains one of the world's poorest countries and many Haitians live in informal or badly built homes in crowded and unsafe conditions. Meanwhile, the soils near the volcano is rich and fertile, making good for infrastructure. People live in these dangerous areas despite the risks. Less developed countries are generally more vulnerable to a hazard event than wealthier countries. They tend to have more pressing problems and have less money to spend on preparing for natural hazard events. This is why natural hazards can quickly turn into disasters in less developed countries. So this next section is going to be different human factors that can affect a country's vulnerability and resilience. I'm going to insert, if you can see this image here, so the first human factor that we're going to touch upon is governance, local and national and political conditions of how they affect this. The existence and enforcement of the building codes and regulations determine the quality and safety of buildings and other structures. The quality of existing infrastructure can affect how quickly a country can recover from a natural hazard. The existence of disaster preparedness plans also influences how quickly a country can recover. The efficiency of emergency services, the quality of communication systems, and the existence of public education and practice hazard responses influences a population's readiness and preparedness to a hazard event. And finally, the level of corruption in a government also greatly affects how resources are used and therefore affects how quickly a country can recover. Another factor are economic and social conditions. The level of wealth influences people's ability to protect themselves and then recover from a natural hazard. This affects the buildings they live in and how well they've been built, for example. People without access to education may also be less aware of the risks of a hazard event and as a result they're probably also less aware of how to protect themselves in the event of a hazard. Poor quality housing is less able to withstand the impact of natural hazards. Communities with poor healthcare suffer from disease and are also less able to cope and recover. And a lack of income opportunities means that people cannot buy the resources they need to prepare or cope with a hazard. This can affect their healthcare and living conditions. And finally, physical and environmental conditions. Areas with high population density tend to have more low quality housing. Rapid urbanisation, which is a large number of people moving from rural areas to the city at a time, creates a need for more housing. So typically lower quality housing is built to accommodate all these new people. The accessibility of an area also affects how quickly rescuers and aid can get to people in the event of a natural hazard. So that is the end of this video. Again, another short one, but I hope you did learn something. I'm going to leave the links to my revision guide down below. I'm going to leave the links to my 
revision guide down below. Feel free to download it and edit it as you will. Please subscribe down below. It really helps me out. I'm aiming for a, a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could subscribe, that would really help me out. I will see you in my next video. Same time, same place next week. Monday, 4.30pm. And we will be discussing governance and natural disasters. Bye. Thank you.